Amen. You can have a seat in God's house today. My name is Travis. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, I'm the lead pastor here. And uh, I'm so excited for church today and this sermon series that we've been in called Losing My Religion. Losing My Religion. And last week we, we talked about the importance of just, and we've been having kind of the same theme every week of how do you see things? How is your relationship with God? How do you view your relationship with God? How do you view your relationship with other, people, with other people? And how do you view your relationship with the church? And last week we talked about Paul and, and the need that he had to, to be able to see a different way. That's why, that's why when, he, when those scales fell off and Ananias put his arm around him and called him his brother and, and he could see because of love. Because of love. And then week one we talked about those those ways that we we view God through our religion, kind of like a, a glass, like kind of like glasses, how people kind of put on their own glasses to be able to see things in a different way. There's 1,100 different Christian denominations, and in that, there's another 38,000 sub-denominations. Can you imagine 38,000 pairs of glasses? And so you wonder why there's so much kind of argument or about theology or about how to believe or what to believe or, you know, some people are like, well, we believe this and this is the best way. Well, we believe you need to get a new pair of glasses, son. You know, like, and, and if you remember that, that moment, like, like, where we just kick the glasses across the room, because why? Because God wants us to not just view things through, you know, our lens, through, through religion. He wants us to view them through the Spirit. He wants us to help, he wants the spirit to help us be able to see who him for who he really is. And this week we're, we're on that same kind of theme of how do you see things and, and we're calling this week, do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Now I know some of you when you hear that, you immediately, you immediately go to the, the Christmas song, Drummer Boy. Do you see what I see? Some people are like, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> it's coming, guys. It's coming. Get ready. Sometimes people hear Christmas music, and if you're like me, all you think about is all the money you have to spend for all the gifts that you got to buy. Like, Pastor, you're supposed to be thinking about baby Jesus. No, I'm thinking about my bills right now. And uh, no. The, the, but in, 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 in honestly, like, when, we come, when we're talking about this perspective, like this, this do you see what I see? If we can honestly evaluate this thought, do I see Christianity the way God wants me to see it? Do I see my relationship with him the way that God wants me to see it? Do I see myself the way that God wants me to see myself? Our big idea during this series has been that following Jesus isn't about rules or religion. It's about radical relationship. I remember the first time that I really like had to confront some massive fears about getting in trouble or possible reject rejection. I was just a kid in, 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 high, in high school. Wow. This would have been really bad if it was a high school. This was a high school story, but I, I, I had this lady that lived a couple of doors down from us, and and I was just being a punk little uh, elementary kid with my friends in my neighborhood, and we saw this kind of this weakness in her fence, and so what do you do if you're you know a, a, a young elementary boy up to no good? You just grab rocks and start chucking it at the fence until it breaks, or or you kick it. Or you kick it until it breaks, and that's exactly what we, we did. That's exactly what we did. And, and so we kicked that thing, and it broke and snapped in half. And somehow, my mom and dad found out. I have no idea how they found out. I don't know if it was a neighbor who saw us doing it and told my parents, but I come home, and my mom is like, you are going to go talk to Alice and tell her that you broke your fence. Not only are you going to tell her you broke her fence, you're going to tell her, offer to be able to fix it. And, uh, and then you're going to uh, figure out a way to earn the money to, to fix it. Because I was like, you know, in third grade, I'm like, how am 
I'm gonna fix the house suspense. I don't know what I'm doing. And I remember going over there, guys, and I remember being terrified. Anyone ever get busted and just knowing like that you're gonna have to own up to something and it's just so afraid? You're so afraid. And I was afraid, not just of, I mean, I already was busted, but I was afraid of what is Alice gonna think of me? What is she gonna think of me? And so I went over there and knocked on the door. <laughs> I wasn't sorry in the middle of kicking that thing down, but I was then after I got busted and knowing that I had to face the person that I offended was so scary. And I'll never forget her response. I'll never forget how she responded to me and she just said, honey, it's okay. She says, Texas, it's okay, honey, you'll be all right. It's okay that you fail. We all make mistakes. You know, she probably was like, come in and let me make you some biscuits. <laughs> I don't know if she said that. Let's that up. But, but, like, I'll just never forget feeling that acceptance in the midst of my failure. Feeling that love. And, and it, what it made me do is want to be a better neighbor. It made me want to be a better neighbor to Alice and stop being a, a young punk. And, uh, unfortunately, I needed a couple more things before I grew out of my rebellious stage to happen in my life, but I'll never forget that moment of her just saying, I love you, I care for you, I accept you, even though you failed. And sometimes if we if we look at scripture, we look at the account of God and man, and if you look at, a lot of times we'll look at our relationship through that lens of we as humanity have failed God, and now we're trying to fix and repair it. And part of the reason why we have that thought or, or that mentality is because of, honestly, the account of Scripture and how people kind of interpret that this account of Scripture. They take their lens and they say, okay, this is how we're going to view this passage of Scripture. And, and I just want to challenge you this morning. Like, let's just look at this baby from a perspective that we never have looked at it before. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. If, you're, if you brought your Bible, you can go ahead and turn there. Otherwise, we're going to uh, read it on the screen. You can follow along. It says this, The serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat from that tree that uh, was in the middle of the garden. You must not touch, touch it or you will die. You will, and, he, and the serpent's like, come on, Eve, let's not believe that. Uh, he says this, you won't die, the serpent said to the woman, for, for God knows that when you eat, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God. And this is how you're going to be like God. You're going to know both good and evil. When the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took it and she ate it. And she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked. And so they sewed fig leaves together and made covering Coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. This is it. This is the big, the big idea today. But the Lord God called to man, Where are you? Where are you? Our first point today is that religion hides from relationship. Religion hides from relationship, but God does everything, everything through relationship, through relationship. So if you look at something that I just kind of, I want us to think about, they're getting our, our illustration ready here, but, but just stay with me here. I want us to think about that, that maybe when you, if you had read that passage of scripture in Genesis chapters 
1 through 3, where you're reading about creation and then you're reading about the fall of man. If you're like me, sometimes you can get to that part of the story. And when you get to that part of the story, here, here's what it seems like. It seems like God was kind of thrown off by Adam and Eve's sin. Or maybe you've had that same thought like, well, I read scripture and things were great, they were naked, and there was fruit. It's like everyone's paradise, you know, like. And then all of a sudden they have shame. They experience shame. And then and then if you if we talk a lot about shame, or if we talk, then then it's like we start focusing on the fall, right? Like that they but have you ever had the thought, have you ever had this thought that God knew that they were gonna do what they did and he still made them? I think that's really important because sometimes it's like we think about God and we think about our relationship with God and he's like and with this mindset of it's always filtered through what we sin, what we sin. We sin and we messed it up and, and we keep sinning and we, we messed it up and, and God hates sin so much. And, and if you if you're have any kind of religious background, that's probably a thought that you've had. And, and, and it's not that that's not true. It's not that God's not holy. It's not that, that he doesn't, you know, it's not that there has to be wrath for sin, so to speak. That, those things are all true, but we kind of miss something. We miss something in, in the account of this scripture that, that before Jesus even came, before Jesus was ever even mentioned, before atonement for sin was even made, something happens in the garden. And that's this. God showed up for his appointment. What do I mean by that? I mean, the, the, last, the last part of what we just read, it, 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 it says that, that he came during the cool of the day, and, and he was walking in the garden. What was he doing? I believe that this is when, when Adam and Eve and God met at the cool of the day. When he wasn't working in the garden or tending in the garden, he was, he was meeting with God. He was talking with God. He was fellowshipping with God. And God kept his appointment. He was still there. Even though they had sinned, guys. That's really important. He doesn't come out of heaven going, What did you do? He says, where are you? Where's my son? What in the world could be going on that you would hide from me? Where are you? And see, here's what happens. This is, this is what happens is, is, is it hides us from relationship. Or religions like you have done so many awful things that you can never have a relationship with God. It, it, it hides us from relationship. We go and we hide. We don't want to be in God's presence because we've sinned. And it isn't that God hasn't, you know, sometimes we think of God in such a way like, well, he's so holy, he can't deal with sin. He would just, if he would have showed up on the scene, he would have, they would have just died. He's like, no, he still showed up on the scene while they had sinned, guys. Like, he still made them, and he still wanted fellowship with them while they had sinned. And what happens is, is it didn't, it, the religion didn't, it didn't change, because that's what happened when, 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 when Adam and Eve ate that fruit. It what gave them a knowledge that God said, hey, you, you're, not, you're not divine like me, so you don't have the ability to see the whole picture. All you can see now, because you ate that, is your sin and your shame. All you can see now is the fear, and, and, you're, you're, and it's going to what? It's going to separate you. It's going to separate you. See, the Bible says that nothing should separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. But it wasn't that sin that God had to separate himself from humanity. It was that humanity had to separate themselves from God. They had to hide. What? There's, there's so much truth. There's so much light. There's so much goodness. And I'm so sinful. I'm, and that's what happens is it distorts the view that we have of ourselves. I just want to say real quick before we jump into this next part that this is such an important thing that God does everything through relationships. This is why the Miracle Offering Sunday is so important because he reaches cities. He reaches our city through relationships. He reaches this world through relationships. I don't have to give to something that I don't believe in or that I'm not in. I get to give us something and to people that are partnering with God all over this world, all over this region. Why? Why? Because he wants relationships with those people. So I'm going to be ready to give. 
again, I get to give it so exciting. So check this out. But what happens is, is religion, it distorts us. You can go back to that other slide, Pastor Stephen. It, 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 it keeps us, it hides us from relationships. But God does everything through relationships. Here's what religion does. You put those glasses on. Those, those religious glasses, and you go to look at yourself through the eyes of what have you done? What have I done? And this is what happens. I start to say things about myself that don't, they're not in line with what God says. See, it, it says this, I look at myself and, and, and I think about all the things that I've done. I think about the, all the, the mistakes that I've made and I actually can have resentment towards myself. I can have hatred towards myself. I, 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 when I look through the eyes of religion, all I can see is my shame. I don't think the fact that God showed up for the appointment, all I see is the things that I've done wrong. I can't even see that God's so good and he's there for me and he loves me. All I think about is my shame. All I look at when I see myself, when I look through the eyes of religion or my sin is my brokenness. I just want to ask you, when you look at yourself, when you look at yourself, what do you see? When you get up in the morning and you get ready, what do you see? When you lay down at night, what's the voice that you're speaking to yourself? Are you saying, God, you really lost it today. You're such a loser. I'm so ashamed of who you are. You're so broken. You're so sinful. You're so sinful. Are you, are you calling yourself ugly? Are you calling yourself ugly? You know, I just got to be super honest with you. Sometimes I look in the mirror and I'm like, man, I got a few extra LBs here, peeps. I'll never forget my great grandma. She, uh, she, she, we had this dog that every time she would feed it, it would come running and she'd go, Fatty, fatty, two by four, can't get through the kitchen door. Sometimes if I'm hating on myself, I'll say the same thing, guys. It's not good. Ugly. Do I think that I'm ugly? Do I think that I'm a loser? Do I think that I'm a loser? You see, here's the thing. This is our next point. Religion speaks to our sin, but God speaks to our identity. It's good. He, he, it speaks to our sin. Like, you've done this. You, you're broken. And, and if you notice the enemy, that's what he did. You go do this. Just eat this. You'll be like God. The reason why God doesn't want you to do this is because you, you'll be like him. And he was the punk. He was the liar. He, he punked them into thinking something that was not true. And, and when they experienced that, it was exactly the opposite of what they thought it was going to be. Like, religion says that, that you know... If you've done these things, all, all you can think of is that this is your identity. And God showed up for his appointment and said, no, I have something more for my kids. It's good. I, I'm still going to show up for, for my appointment. See, it speaks to our identity. So instead of, of calling ourselves a loser, God, what he does when we when we take off our glasses of religion and we embrace our relationship with him and we let the spirit of God do something in us that we can't do for ourselves, what, what does he do? He, he makes this holy exchange. He says, no longer should you view yourself as a loser, but you should realize that you're chosen. No, no longer should you should you feel hatred for yourself. No, no longer should you feel hatred for yourself, but you gotta realize that you're forgiven. Yes. Some of us today need to work on our relationship that we have with ourselves. Because when I say to you things like, do you know that you can be forgiven? Do you know that you can exchange your hatred, your resentment, the things that you have towards yourself? You can make this divine exchange. Sometimes I say that and you're like, well, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. See, that's not about your relationship with God. That's about the relationship that you have with yourself. God might be up there going, I want you to be forgiven. I want you to be loved. I've got things for you. But you're the one that's saying no. You're the one that's like Adam and Eve for you. God's like, where are you at? And you're like, I've done too many things. I can't be here. This isn't about your relationship with God. Sometimes it's about our relationship with ourselves. Like, 
Like, I can't get past my own hatredness. I can't get past my own bitterness. And God's like, let me do something in you that you can't do for yourself. Give me your self-hatred. Give me your, give me your unforgiveness that you have towards yourself. See, I want to forgive you. I want to love you. I want to care for you. I want you to look at this mirror and see that you're forgiven and you're chosen. All the other things to worry about. But unless you're willing, if you don't have that relationship with yourself, God's like, he doesn't violate that, guys. So some of us might need to come to this place where we're letting forgiveness in for the first time. Maybe you feel like you're broken and and your brokenness has just been defining you your whole time. Well, God says, listen, let me care for you. Maybe you feel like you've got so much shame that you, you don't deserve to be called a son or daughter. But God says, let me take your shame and let me call you my son. Let me call you my daughter. Maybe you've got this sinfulness and that's how you see yourself. You look in the mirror and all you see is sinfulness. And God says, I didn't miss that appointment. You know why? Because you're loved. And your value isn't about what you do for me. Your value is about who you are to me. God speaks to our identity, our identity. Sometimes if, if you're like me, you, you look at those things in the mirror and you're struggling with this relationship with, that you have with yourself. You just kind of have this consistency where you're like, man, I just struggle just with this sinful thing. And that's because here's why, guys. That's our next point is that religion confirms the deepest, darkest fears that we have about ourselves. And this is what it does. It gives us the false promise that we can't, that we can fix those things by working harder. But this is what God does. God fixes what we can. Amen. Here's the thing. If you feel like that you're sinful, you feel like you're shamed, you feel like broken, you feel like that you can't do anything to get to this next point, you're not alone. Here's exactly what happened. Adam and Eve, as soon as they experienced that shame, that guilt, what did they do? They went and tried to make clothes for themselves. That is where religion, in my opinion, was introduced. Before God even came on the scene, man was what? I gotta fix this. I gotta fix it. I can't. God's gonna show up, and what am I gonna say that I did this? The first thing out of God's mouth wasn't, what did you do? It was, where are you? Where are you? Sometimes we operate under this false promise that we can just fix it. And if I just work harder, if, I, if I'm just a better dad, if I just do more things that will work, if I'm just a better employee, if I'm just a better Christian, if I can just do more, then I'm going to feel better. And that's, guys, that's just a religious attitude. And Jesus says, I want you to do more out of response of the love and the forgiveness that I have for you. Not because you're trying to earn my approval. You've already got my approval. You've already got value to me. You see, when God showed up for that appointment, it showed you the value that he placed on humanity. The value. My sons and my daughters, they're stuck in this place, but I've already got a solution, and his name is Jesus. You know, sometimes I think that when we look at the account in Scripture, we say to ourselves that we threw God for a loop by sinning. And I, I just want to say, say that God's bigger than that. And he made us knowing that we were going to do what we did. And not only did about what Adam and Eve did, but he knew what you were going to do. And he had provision for your sin before you even thought to sin. To me, that's mind-blowing. But, you know, it's like, you guys ever seen that, that, that show MacGyver? Like, he just fixes everything with duct tape, you know, or, or what, you know, like... Anyone ever seen MacGyver here? Please just don't leave me hanging there. Yeah. They're like, MacGyver, what? Yeah. Uh, 
Like he fixes, he he what? He he like deals with the situation and he and you know it's like here's the thing, God's way better than MacGyver guys. He doesn't just take like what's oh just I gotta figure out how to fix this. Like, dude, the cross is way better than duct tape, guys. It's way better. And, 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 and we just gotta stop thinking that we gotta fix it, that we gotta work our way out of our brokenness. Like, look, look, like God, the love of God never fails. I love this scripture in Galatians 5, 6. It's, it's the message version. I'm gonna read the whole thing. It says, I suspect that you would never attend this, but this is what happens. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects, you are cut off from Christ. You fall out of grace. Meanwhile, we expectantly wait for a satisfying relationship with the Spirit. For in Christ, neither our most conscientious religion nor disregard of religion amounts to anything. What matters is something far more interior, faith expressed in love. I'll share what the other translation says. The message kind of breaks that down a little bit. Another translation says, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision matters, but what matters is faith expressing itself through love, working itself out in love. Why does that matter? What does that have to do with anything? First off, just like we sang, I will build my life upon your love. It is the firm foundation. It is the firm foundation. I've got to build my life. Why? Because if I'm not building my life upon the love, then I'm going to build it upon my works. And at the end of the day, our works aren't enough. Yeah, that's true. At the end of the day, our works aren't enough. What matters is something more. It's far greater. It's faith expressed in love. In love. So we've got just two next steps today. My first question is this, where are you at? Where are you at? When God comes, when God comes to you and says, Adam, John, Reed, the son, Tate, when he says your name, Ashley, when he calls you out, what do you say? Oh, I'm too sinful. I, I got too much hatred in my No, no, no. Do you, are you resisting the love of God? I just want, I just want the love of God to break off every religious attitude or mentality in my life. I'm so done with it. I'm so done with it. I'm so done with trying to earn it. I'm so done with trying to, to work for it. I'm so done. When he calls my name, when he says, Travis, I want to go, yeah, I'm here. I got, I'm not going to hide from you. You see me. You see me and you love me. You see the good, the bad, and the ugly. You think about when, well, I'll never forget when I took my vows with my wife and we were on the, on the, the stage, and for better or worse, for sickness and health, the death do us part. Somehow we think that our relationship with God is contingent upon something different than what our vows would be. Meaning, like, that God is somehow going to just abandon you because things are bad in your life or because of decisions that you made. He kept his appointment. I need you to think about that before you read the rest of the account of what happened to humanity, that he showed up and he was there and he was ready and he already had a solution in mind for Adam and Eve and his name was Jesus. Where are you at? Where are you at? The second is this, let God help you see. Maybe today you're like, when I look in the mirror, Pastor, I don't see son, I don't see daughter, I don't see chosen, I don't see love, I see ugly. I, I, I see, I see, I see ugly and I, I see broken and I see loser and here's the deal, let him take these things off and, and what, let him, let him call you guys. You're called. You're, you're cared for, you're chosen, you're loved, you're a daughter, you're a son. There's forgiveness in Jesus. Let God help you see you the way he sees you. Yeah, 
good. He loves you. He's for you. I've got this beautiful testimony that I want to read as we close. This girl, Erica, I asked her if I could share this, and I didn't get the social media post. I couldn't get it quite right from the graphics, so forgive me. You'll just have to let me read it to you. But she posted this picture of herself, and it was right after church, and this is what she said. I took this picture the other day, but I felt the Holy Spirit talking to me in church. Come on, somebody. Come on, yeah. Somebody. It says, society... Nowadays, paints a picture of what people are supposed to look like. According to society, I'm fat and overweight. But today, I'm setting the bar. I am worthy. Amen. I'm able to be loved again. I've never, nor will I ever start judging a book by its cover. Today, I'm taking my life back, and I will no longer let society dictate my worth or what I'm supposed to look like. Oh, yes, now I see. Yes, now I can lose some weight. Yes, girl, preach. <laughs> but I also love myself just the way that I am. That's right. Dude, that's why we have a church. That's why we do what we do, so people can come here and experience love and acceptance, radical acceptance that can't be earned. We don't let society dictate what our worth is. We let the God who kept his appointment determine our value and our worth. Can we pray? Yeah. There's some of you here today, you just feel like, I'm so disconnected from God, and I need a fresh view of love. We're going to pray for you in a minute, that, that God would just renew that life that's built upon His love, but some other people here today, they, they might be saying, I don't have this relationship with God at all. I'm not a follower of Jesus. I've never accepted his perfect work on my behalf. If that's you today, you know, I need to accept that or I need to accept that again because I've walked away from that. I just want you to be so bold. We've got our eyes closed and our heads bowed because we're praying. And I want you to be so bold and just say, yeah, Pastor, that's me by raising your hand. I want to pray for you. Thank you. I see that hand, girl. Thank you for that hand, bro. Anyone else? Thank you. Hands up all over. There's some here today I don't think you've ever known what it looks like to follow Jesus for real. We're going to pray that God's going to build a foundation upon your life that you've never experienced before. A foundation built on love, not upon your work, upon the work that he's already done for you in Jesus. If you want to, just pray this prayer. Church, I want us all to pray this prayer. With those that have said yes to Jesus, just say, Dear Lord, Dear Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. That He did. That He did. What I couldn't do. What I couldn't do. Thank you that you see me. Thank you that you see me. As a me. child of God. As a child of God. I confess my sins. I confess my sins. And ask for your forgiveness. And ask for your forgiveness. Help fill me with your love. Help fill me with your love. Your purpose. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to respond to the God wow. now by, by everyone stand up. We're going to respond to the Lord now. For those of you who might be in this house and you realize you've been building a foundation in your relationship with God that isn't built on love, through. we're going to respond to so this song that talks about the that His love is our first shot. foundation. But before we do that, I want to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name. We talked about it right before the beginning of service, that there's some foundations that we've been building upon that's not been based upon your love. Some people here are tired from sewing up fig leaves to cover themselves. Some are tired of the hatred.